Hi, and welcome to P3, Plan, Prototype and Polish. In this series, we're going to attempt to realize interesting ideas, useful or not, um, and try to end up with a product that is super polished, as if it came out of a big corporation like Sony or something. The box, first off, looks professional as fuck. Shout out to the guys over at CNC Designs for making this thing for me. Shout out to Frank and them too. I see you, my And we're gonna do that using uh, digital manufacturing techniques, like 3D printing, laser cutting, UV printing, all of that. And we're gonna try to end up with a really nice polished end product in the end. But first, I wanna give an update on the Ice Cube Maker project. <laughs> because now it seems like I'm starting another project which is gonna get abandoned and it's like a vicious circle. But no, it's uh, the supply chain shortages and the craziness in the world been haven't been able to, to get the parts for that. So still waiting on those. So in the meanwhile, let's start this project, but let's pick it up later. And we'll try to wrap it up in this new sort of P3 format. But yeah, as for today's project, uh, we're gonna create AI. A E Y E, and I've always been really fascinated by uh, AI and ML and generating stuff with it. And really recently, it's been sort of an explosion. It's going really fast. But I had this idea: what if we were able to create sort of a camera? Not really a camera, but a thing that would take a picture from a sensor, send it to an AI to ask it, "What is this? Describe this scene." And then uh, getting back that data. Okay, blah, 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 this is a scene of X. We would then feed that back into a GAN, a generative adversarial network to create an image from that. So we take a picture, ask the AI, what is it? We would then tell that back to the AI, what it just said, and then have it create an image. And I think that would be a really fascinating project. And I'd like to make it sort of in a Polaroid format. So you take a picture, it spits out an AI version of it, so sort of, uh, seeing the world through a neural network. And today we're gonna start planning it. So yeah, let's get started. All right, let's look at all the parts and the software we'll need to make this happen. So first off, we'll need some AI brains to make this all happen, of course. So it will be fun to go all galaxy brain and try to train models uh, though I neither have a good graphics card or a galaxy brain, uh, so luckily uh, people about a billion times smarter than me have already solved this. So let's use something off the shelf. So for the part that analyzes the image, let's use Google Cloud Vision AI. They offer free credits and with all the captures, boats, trains, bikes, I'm not a robot that I've done <laughs> in my days, I can be pretty sure that it'll be accurate. Uh, because we've well trained it, so uh, Google usually has pretty good APIs as well. So, uh, so yeah, I think that'll be the way to go. Google or AI overlords, they know how to do that sort of stuff. As for the GAN to generate the images, um, I think the obvious choice would be Dolly 2. And I was actually one of the lucky ones to recently gain early access, so it'd be stupid not to use it. Cheap it is not, however. Uh, so let's actually add sort of a high quality, low quality switch on the camera. Why not? So for high quality, let's use Dolly 2 and my bank account. Uh, but for low quality, let's just use Crayon, which was usually previously called uh, uh, Dolly Mini. So Crayon does not have an API, but just by inspecting their website, you can tell that it's pretty easy to use anyhow. You can use their sort of hidden API. So that should be the AI part pretty much figured out. We just use somebody else's. We have to use internet, obviously. Uh, so the camera will need Wi-Fi. So then we'll obviously need some sort of brains to put in this camera to talk to these APIs. So the obvious choice would be a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I've actually yet to even use one ever, but I think I understand pretty much how to use it. Uh, so let's find out. But you could maybe even pull this off with a powerful Arduino, like one of the mega ones. I don't know, but uh, let's go for a Raspberry Pi. I think that should be good. It has Wi-Fi built in, so let's go with that. And then obviously we'll need some sort of a sensor to capture our image with. As these images will be AI mangled from and back and all the ways and upside down anyhow, I don't think it matters too much if the sensor is sort of potato quality. An off-the-shelf Raspberry Pi camera module should be way fine enough for it, I think. So let's use something like that. 
And then finally we'll need to be able to print out the resulting picture, like a Polaroid camera. So uh, something suitably crusty to go with our Raspberry Pi uh, would be one of these thermal printers of AliExpress. Uh, so they boast a cool two colors, black and white, uh, and 384 pixels in width to work with. And I think that will actually complement the sort of crusty nature of, of these uh, AI-generated pictures anyhow. So we can use some dithering to be able to, to print out a picture there. I, I saw some people using them and they get some decent results printing a photo out of them. Crusty but sort of cool and fast and yeah, that's the trick. Yeah, they're also quite compact. They use TTL or RS-232 serial communication, so that should be easy to interface uh, with our Raspberry Pi as well. But yeah, summing that up, that's basically it. We'll use a Raspberry Pi and a camera module to capture pictures, send that to Google Vision to analyze the photo, give back some results, some tags. Then we'll feed that back to Dolly 2 or Crayon, fit it out with our thermal printer. That should be the whole system. And then obviously power it by some sort of a, a battery in the camera itself. So I'll get to ordering these parts uh, and then we can start prototyping in the next episode. Uh, after which uh, we can start thinking about a nice, uh, really professional looking enclosure to put this uh, monstrosity into. And if anybody's interested, I'll keep the documentation and code in a, a GitHub repo, uh, which I'll link in the video description for each episode. And if you have any thoughts or ideas for the project, of course, just leave a comment. Uh, I'm happy to hear. Uh, and I'll try to start keeping a uh, bi-weekly schedule for these videos. Uh, not for sure that I will be able to follow that, but I can at least try. Uh, anyhow, um, thanks for watching this one. I'll see you in the next one. We'll get the prototype.